Bless your name. together. How many know that God is your everything? How many know that God is your everything? Come on, put your hands together. Come on, musicians. Guitar, come on. Come on, boy. So a little bass guitar.
Gracious God, our Father, we come before you saying hallelujah 
and glory to your name. For great has been thy faithfulness. All that we have needed, thy hands have provided. We ask now, Lord, that you would come, that you would gather in our midst, that you would be glorified and you would be lifted up with our praise. This is the prayer that we ask now. In the name of Jesus, let every heart say amen. amen. You may be seated. give God praise. If you cannot tell it all of just how good God has been to you, is that your testimony today? That you can't tell how good God has been? Has God been good to you? Has he blessed you? Has God healed you? Has God provided for you? If you had 10,000 tongues, you'd never be able to thank God enough. Come on and give God some praise if you know you can't tell it all. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, Trinity. We thank and praise God for the ministry of music of our sanctuary choir. Let's give God praise for them today. Amen. Amen. It is indeed my honor and my privilege to bring to you two of our confirmation students who will provide our welcome today. Today we have Reese Walter. She's a seventh grader from Skinner North. Uh, she's with our confirmation class, and we also have Malia Hall, and she is a student, eighth grade student at Gwendolyn Brooks College Prep Academy. Come on, Trinity, let's welcome these two beautiful sisters as they come to provide our welcome. Good morning, Trinity family. 
My name is Reese Walker. And my name is Malia Hall. We've come to the point in our worship service where we take time to welcome all our guests. If you're here at Trinity for the first time, we ask that you stand and remain standing wherever you are. The applause you hear is our way of saying welcome. On behalf of our senior pastor, Reverend Dr. Otis Moss III, and our Trinity family, we welcome you to Trinity United Church of Christ, where we lift up Christ, engage our community, and celebrate our culture. If you are visiting from another church, we ask that you take back our greetings to your senior pastor and church. If you are not a member of a church, after you hear the powerful message by our preacher that during the invitation that you would consider to give the minister your hand and give the Lord your heart. At this time, we invite Trinity members around your guests to give them a warm Trinity welcome. May God bless you. Let's, pr let's praise God for these two beautiful sisters. You can do better than that, Trinity. These two young women in the house of the Lord on the Lord's day, providing the welcome. They could be anywhere else, but they are here at Trinity United Church of Christ. We thank and praise God for you. We'd also like to welcome all of those persons who are online today. We have Bravo Alpha from Avon, Indiana. We have Candace Phelan from Texas, Sharon Webb Abrams from Birmingham, Alabama, Cheryl Samuel from California, Janeth Barnes from Minnesota, Cheryl Elaine from Atlanta, Brenda Wilson from, and Samson from Hawaii, Diane Wilson Winston from Snellville, Georgia, Susan Fowler from Emporia, Kansas, and then we have Dr. Denisha Campbell from Salto, Uruguay. Amen. Why don't you just tell everybody hi online? Say hello, everyone. Amen. We thank and praise God for all of our virtual viewers as well. And we thank and praise God for all of those visitors who are here with us today. I just have a couple of announcements. Number one, I just want to remind you that um, the women's retreat is coming, as I'm sure you hear Sister Marlisa mentions every week. We have a few more spots available. Seriously, a few more spots. It's exciting. You all should be excited about our women's retreat. We only do this every two years. And we have some amazing preachers who will be coming. We have the Reverend Shalita Fombi who will be coming to preach. Amen. She's a powerhouse. We also have for the first time coming with us um, the Reverend Janae Pitts Murdoch, Reverend Dr. Janae Pitts Murdoch. She is the first woman pastor of the uh, Light of the World Christian Center in Indianapolis, one of the largest churches in Indianapolis, Indiana. And we are so excited to hear from her as she is a great preacher. We also have Dr. Marielle Bouquet, who will be coming to us, talking and speaking to us regarding breaking the cycle of intergenerational trauma. And it's going to be very powerful. And we just secured another guest um, just this past week for Friday, as we have secured a documentary for the retreat called Black Women's Health. And you may have heard of a brother by the name of Steve Harvey. He has a set of twins, one twin named Brandy Harvey. She will be with us, and she has produced this film. And so she will be with us at the retreat as well. So we are really excited about what all of God is going to do. And so we know there are some sisters in the pews and also who are watching who are in need of this retreat, a time of rejuvenation, of revival, a time in which you will have fellowship, fun, good food and an opportunity just to relax and turn off, but also an opportunity where we will be giving the tools so that each of us can rise and step into our authority and slay any giants that come in our way, but also to walk in our purpose. And so make sure you get yourself registered for this amazing retreat. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, we also want to remind you, Pastor Moss asked that I remind you that to join Congo Square with Broadway in Chicago for the Chicago premiere of August Wilson's autobiographical show called How I Learned What I Learned, featuring Chicago's own Harry Lennox, who is playing August Wilson. 
And, it's li and it, it will be running from April the 20th through May the 5th. So make sure uh, down at the uh, at Broadway in Chicago's Broadway Playhouse at the Water Tower Place. So make sure you check it out. We all know this is one of Pastor Moss's and First Lady Moss's favorite, favorite um, poets and writers. Amen? Amen. We also, um, Pastor Moss is not here today, as you can see. He is in Columbus, Georgia, preaching today. I mean, Columbus, Ohio, preaching today. So we ask that you will pray for him as he is preaching, I'm sure, a powerful word, as our pastor does, to those people that are in Columbus, Ohio. But he has not left us without a message as today we have a tag team sermon from him that he has pre-recorded as well as Reverend Mose Harris who will be tag teaming with him on today. Amen. His family is here, but I also got a word. His wife is here. Sister Harris, can you wave your hand? It is her birthday today. And I want to... We want to say happy birthday to our sister, our friend, to Pastor Mose's wife. We want you to know we thank God for you, and we say bless the day that you were born. Amen? Amen. At this time, it is offering time. Scripture says, given it shall be given unto you a good measure, pressed down and running over. Shall the Lord give into your bosom. Nobody's excited about offering time? <laughs> Offering is a sacred time of worship, amen? It is a time that we publicly say that God has been good to us, and we cannot tell it all. It is a way that we publicly say that God has given everything to us and just invites us to participate with God, to give back to God a portion of what God has given to us. It is a way to publicly say, God, I love you, God, I trust you, and just as you sacrificed your son on the cross for us, God, I make a sacrifice to you, that God, that I know that if I give, that you will open up the windows of heaven and pour me out blessings that I will not have room enough to receive. Amen? Let us go to God in prayer. We ask God's blessings upon our offering. God, we thank you and we praise you for another opportunity to give back to you a portion of what you have given to us. Bless now these offerings. Bless those who have to give and bless those who do not have to give. And allow these gifts to be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom here on earth. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our first offering today is our tithes and offerings, and our second offering is for our scholarships on today. We ask that our media ministry will bring forth our Trinity offering video as well as our Trinity news. For 62 years, we, the Village of Trinity United Church of Christ, have been serving Jesus Christ, our liberating Savior, who has called us to be unapologetic of our relationship with God and unashamed of our culture as we prophetically stand with those who have their backs against the wall. Today, we have two offerings, with the first being our tithes and offerings, and the second is for our scholarships, which allows us to bless members of Trinity who are seeking higher education with funds. Because of your generosity, last year we were able to give over $150,000 to members. Scripture reminds us to give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and rolling over shall the Lord give unto you. There are multiple ways for you to support the powerful ministry of Trinity with your tithes and offerings. You may give through our Secure Give application. Text to give by dialing 855 781 8384 or use our cash app dollar sign trinity ucc you can also use our website www.trinitychicago.org and with a few easy clicks you can support this ministry also our first fruits direct draft program allows you to make your church a priority if you prefer to mail your gift simply send your tithe or gift to 400 west 95th Street. Thank you for your radical generosity in support of Trinity United Church of Christ, the greatest church this side of the Jordan. I am Jada McIntosh and you're watching Trinity News Live. Here at Trinity, we develop and curate lively ministries to further serve and work for our Lord and Savior. 
Take these next few minutes to listen in on the upcoming events within the Trinity community. Here at Trinity, we believe that your body is a temple and your health is well. April is Autism Acceptance Month. This week, we focus on raising awareness about autism acceptance and promoting inclusion and connectedness for people with autism. This helps to achieve optimal health and reach full potential. Did you know Autism Spectrum Disorder, ASD, affects one in 36 children? Black children with ASD continue to be at a disadvantage in terms of diagnosis and access to care, putting our children behind the curve, as early diagnosis is essential. Together we can celebrate autism awareness and reduce stigma by getting educated and learning more about autism, showing support and celebrating differences, being inclusive, being respectful and understanding. For more information about autism, visit www.autismspeaks.org and Trinity's Imabasi Health and Wellness Ministry. Save the date. On Friday, April 26 at 6.30 p.m., we will have our annual Drug and Alcohol Recovery Revival. Reverend Dr. Charlie Dates, senior pastor of Salem Baptist Church, will be our guest preacher. The Bible has this one line, he was moved with compassion. He felt it on the inside. I'm so glad that I serve a God where even if you can't feel what I'm going through, he knows. This is Logan Page reporting the Trinity Health and Wellness segment. Remember your health is well. Trinity United Church of Christ is always in the heart of the community, ever seeking to win the community's heart. All right, we are calling all young adults ages 19 to 35. So if you are young and go ahead and pull up, please join the Young Adult Ministry for It's a Real Party, exploring the power of relationships series, Tuesdays, April 16th and April 23rd, from 6 p.m. to 7.15 in room 202. Now sisters, Divas, queens, you already know that the time is winding down and we want you to be with us. Where? At the Trinity United Church of Christ Women's Retreat. Now we should all know, when is it happening? Exactly, May 16th through the 18th. And honey, where are we pulling up to? <laughs> that is right, Lake Geneva. Registration, you already know it's $150 per person and the hotel info can be found in the bulletin. Now, if you are interested in being a vendor, which we want you to be, please contact the Women's Retreat at trinitychicago.org. Now we know that all of us are on different paths of life and we do not want you to do life alone. So if you are in need of prayer, please join Trinity's Healing Ministry and Prayer Warriors immediately following both worship services in the right chapel. All right. It's time for you to mark them calendars. I know the comeback is real, okay? We've heard y'all, and so we created another one. Trinity's Women's Guild Tech Savvy Seniors Workshop Part 2 on Saturday, April 27th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. You will learn basic navigation on phones and computers. You will learn how to avoid common and current scams, because maybe they be scamming out here, and ways to safeguard your personal information, because we don't need everybody up in our business. And most importantly, staying safe online. Now, this is going to be such an amazing honoring day. So please save the date for the ordination of Michelle Day and Victor Perry on Sunday, April 28, 2024 at 1.30 p.m. This is Marlisa Stalin reporting our community engagement segment. Recuerda eres los manos y los pies de Cristo. Remember that you are the hands and feet of Christ. The Trinity UCC Federal Credit Union will host this annual meeting on Thursday, April 18th at 6 p.m. in Montgomery Hall. Trinity family, meet us for Midweek Manna in person in the sanctuary, Wednesdays at 11.30 a.m. for a powerful word and worship. Go! Applications for scholarships and graduate recognition are now open for Trinity members only. The deadline to apply for a scholarship is Thursday, May 9th. Save the date for Trinity UCC's Married Couples Ministry State of the Black Marriage virtual event on Friday, April 19th from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. featuring our senior pastor, Reverend Dr. Otis Moss III and First Lady Monica Moss. Check out our bulletin for registration information. Finally, remember to watch Trinity United Church of Christ on the Fox Soul Network, Sundays at 9 a.m. Central. And be sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook. I am Jada McIntosh, and this is your Trinity News for April 14th. Stay tuned for upcoming events and stories involving the Trinity community.
Remember to stay blessed and live out loud for Christ. Thank you for watching. To my Trinity family, I have some incredibly important news for you. I need you to write this down. I need to make sure you do not leave church today without having the information that I am about to share with you. As you know, we have been in negotiation with the city since Mayor Rahm Emanuel in reference to the proposal to place a viaduct in front of our church. I announced to the church, I was very excited in speaking with Mayor Brandon Johnson that this was taken off the table. Unfortunately, as it happens in Chicago, not all of the departments communicate with each other. The Department of Planning of Chicago was very clear that the Washington Heights community does not want a viaduct, but wants economic development, wants improvement in the community from sidewalks to the streets, but not a viaduct. On April 24th, there will be a community meeting that is being run by CDOT, Chicago Department of Transportation. You will discover that CDOT still has the viaduct as a possible proposal for this neighborhood. I am asking you as members of this church, as people invested in this community, many who have grown up in this community, that you would register for this meeting and make it abundantly clear to the Chicago Department of Transportation what we already communicated to the Department of Planning, what we already communicated to Mayor Brandon Johnson, Mayor Lori Lightfoot, and Mayor Rahm Emanuel. A viaduct will destroy the possibility of economic development on 95th Street. A viaduct will close down the ability for us to come to church off of 95th Street for up to three to possibly five years, forcing us to drive through the neighborhood, simple, small streets that are not designed to have large numbers of cars to come down these residential streets. It will remove the possibility of setting up stores and housing on 95th Street, on having a grocery store, a post office, a restaurant, will be wiped out solely so that cars can drive faster down 95th Street. We invested uh, in utilizing a firm, Hubert Morgan and Dr. Kirk, to do research in the neighborhood. And 95% of the people in this neighborhood do not want this proposal. The city of Chicago did not do their due diligence because their community meeting only had 36 people show up. Roughly about 20 to 22 of those individuals were connected with the city in some form or fashion. So we need you to sign up for this virtual meeting with the Chicago Department of Transportation. We're also going to help you on this front. We will provide a variety of responses you can send in on this virtual meeting. When the virtual meeting happens, uh, right there in the chat, you can share your position. We will provide the verbiage, the exact words that need to be stated so that they will be recorded and will be documented so that the Chicago Department of Transportation will be in alignment with the Department of Planning. And we can look for 
community improvements, but not a viaduct. We need 800 people to show up and flood this meeting. So it becomes abundantly clear to anyone in any department, this community does not want a viaduct. If the city continues down this path, then they draw a line in the sand between Trinity United Church of Christ and any particular politician or department that seeks to disrupt our community. We are looking and have been working toward a 95th Street Renaissance. Our Community Development Corporation, Andaleo, is a part of the community table. Chicago State University has been working toward this idea of community renaissance. Our Amani Village project is a part of the Renaissance. The development of the Red Line is a part of the Renaissance. The improvements that we were the catalyst for, for the Carter G. Woodson Library is a part of the Renaissance. Even our community garden across the street is a part of the Renaissance. Along with the improvements we've done at this church, we do not want this derailed. God has given us a vision. Within 15 years, this could be one of the greatest neighborhoods in the Midwest. Not only with housing, but the services and businesses that will be flourishing, where young people can become business owners and we can create wealth creation that can be passed down from generation to generation. April 24th, April 24th, we need you to register. Make your voice known. We will not allow anyone to disrupt the progress and development of this community so that we can see renaissance, not gentrification, but the development and transformation of the 95th Street Court. Thank you for your support. Immediately following the worship service, make sure you either get a card or there is a QR code that you need to check into so that you can get all of the information so that you may make your voice known virtually on April 24th for the C dot meeting about 95th Street. May God bless you and may God keep you. But I'll say it again, don't cross Trinity because we know how to fight the good fight for our community.
shared earlier, our senior pastor is preaching in Ohio, but he has not left us without a word. And so at this time, our media department will bring forth our senior pastor for his preaching moment, after which you will also hear from Reverend Mose Harris. Let us praise God as they all come. I will bless the Lord at all times. God's praise shall continually be in my mouth. I'm really excited today about today's message. I know some of you are looking at me and say, wait a minute, you're, you're, you're with us? Yes, I'm with you right now. And we have a message today as we continue the series, The Power of Generosity. Last week was extraordinary of how God's spirit descended into this house. And we thank God for what God did and continues to do. We continue this series on today. And I would invite everyone who is with us, whether you are here physically or whether you are with us virtually, let us go to the Lord in prayer at this time. With every head bowed, with every eye closed, let us go to God. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and see if there is any destructive way in me. 
When you discover what does not belong, I ask that you would remove it from me and cast it into the sea of forgetfulness as far as the east is from the west, that it may never return again. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, you are my strength. Without a doubt, you are my redeemer. Holy Spirit, do thy will, do thy will, Holy Spirit. And in the mighty, awesome, majestic, powerful, saving, salvific, liberating name of Jesus, who is the Christ, we collectively pray. And the people of God, who love God, may say, Amen. I want to offer this passage of scripture to you today, if we might stand, and my preaching partners today will also continue with this message from this scripture on today. We're looking at the gospel according to Luke chapter 19, beginning with verse 1, and I would invite you to read this scripture this week as a meditation, as you are meditating on this message and upon this word. Uh, let us go to Gospel according to Luke, chapter 19, beginning with verse 1. And it reads as follows. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, Another translation, because he was short in stature, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down. Immediately I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter. Another translation, all the church folks started fussing, talking about he's going to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, today, salvation has come to this house. Because this man, too, is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Zacchaeus, he was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. Couldn't see Jesus and decided to climb up a sycamore fig tree to get a glimpse of Jesus. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of God's holy word. For the first portion of our message, I offer the first portion as my preaching partners will uh, continue uh, this message on today. For the first portion of the message, I'd like for us to focus on this idea of victory in vulnerability. Victory in vulnerability, part two of the power of generosity. Victory in vulnerability. If you'd be so kind as to turn to your neighbor and look at your neighbor, don't look at me. Look at, your, look at your neighbor, thank you, and just say, there is victory in vulnerability. God bless you. Victory in vulnerability. Vulnerability is a pathway uh, to God's presence. It is the only, only, only when, when we take off our mask. Can we witness God's action when we are open and we are willing to be vulnerable before God 
and vulnerable in our own spiritual mirror. It is one of the great scholars, a person who actually has one of the largest, most viewed TED Talks in history, a woman by the name of Dr. Brene Brown who's written the book, A Dare to Lead, and a variety of others, Uh, she does studies, research on vulnerability, but it did not begin begin that way. She first started looking at trying to understand uh, love and connection. What is the difference? Why do certain people build deep connections and are able to deepen their relationships with other people? She had mountains and mountains of research. She found out that there was only uh, one common denominator between those uh, who have deep connections and love, those who are able to overcome incredible trauma. She said there was only one particular variable that she found, and that variable was the variable of vulnerability. And as she studied and as she looked at all the research she found, she found that that she was a person who was refusing to be vulnerable and did not have the deep connections that she so desperately wanted. She says it this way. She says, when we let ourselves be seen, to love with our whole hearts, Even though there is no guarantee things will work out the way that we expect, people who who choose to do this, something happens in their lives. Something happens mentally, emotionally, and Brene Brown says something happens spiritually. The person who chooses to take the mask off, and say, this is who I am completely. I am not fully formed. God is still working on me. I have bruises and cracks, but, but I want you to know that I do not hide who I am. I am a work in progress, and I'm willing to face the moments of brokenness, the trauma I have experienced, and the hurdles I have overcome and the doors that have been slammed in my face. When a person chooses to be vulnerable, it leads us down a path where we are in the presence of God. I borrow from another story that I heard by, of a sister by the name of Ilmad. Ilmad was a, a refugee from Syria. She made her way to Sweden, found a work, and seemed as if everything was all right. But she was plagued by nightmares and plagued by struggle, plagued by her stomach hurting consistently. And someone told her, even though things seemed to be shaped uniquely in her life, she had a job, she was able to pay her rent, she was moving up the ladder, but something was weighing on her soul. A friend of her said that that you need to see somebody, you need to talk to a therapist. Uh, But according to Ahmad, she stated that I came out of a family of closedness, a family that did not share, a family that did not communicate. And I thought I had to keep everything inside to protect myself. But the moment she made the decision to be vulnerable, she found someone to speak with. All of a sudden, the weight that she was carrying was released, and she began to tell her story of the trauma of surviving a war when other people in her family did not survive. Vulnerability is the pathway in which we will place uh, place ourselves in the presence of God. And that brings us to this particular text today, a text that I believe that highlights so many things, but one uh, idea that it highlights is vulnerability. Jesus is on his way to Calvary, passing through the area known as Jericho. 
And there, as he is passing through, we, we are introduced to a main character, one could say, by the name of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus is a tax collector, but not just any tax collector. He is the chief tax collector. He has a relationship with Rome, has a relationship with the empire. And Zacchaeus, the chief tax collector, is the person who cheated his own people so that he could become wealthy. He he was the hustler. He was the BMF of the community. For those who don't know that, just go and look it up or ask somebody in your family. He, He was running. He had a cartel in terms of cheating his own Jewish people. Zacchaeus was the chief tax collector. And everybody knows no one could stand a tax collector, especially that time period, because they were connected to Rome. But but something happened with this gentleman by the name of Zacchaeus. The word was out on the street that Jesus was coming in town. And Zacchaeus, it states, who was short in stature, could not see over the crowd. He couldn't see Jesus, my Lord. Even though he was wealthy, he had resources, he still couldn't see Jesus. Even though he had uh, his uh, 401k plan, he had uh, all of his stocks, his, his bonds, he had the necessary resources, trust fund for the next generation of his family, but still couldn't see Jesus with all of his resources, even Zacchaeus tax collector's uh, name on every building that he owned all around Galilee, uh, Jericho, and get in all of the region of the space, even though Zacchaeus' name was on buildings and upon scrolls, he still couldn't see Jesus. You know, it is your resources don't put you in a position to see Jesus. What you have does not put you in a position to see Jesus. Your, your relationships or organizations you're a part of do not put you in a position to see Jesus. The only way that he was going to be able to see Jesus is he had to make himself vulnerable. Can, can you imagine with me just for a moment, if I may paint this picture, to have this man of short in stature who could not see over the entire crowd. He makes this decision at this moment that I want to see Jesus. So, though I have silver and gold, I, I want to see Jesus. Even though I have land and cattle, I want to see Jesus. Even though hundreds of people work for me, I want to see Jesus. Even though I receive the invitation from Caesar to come to Caesar's annual ball, I want to see the man Jesus there. There is no other man like him. And the only way that I can see Jesus is if I make myself vulnerable. Everybody has to see who I really am. I've got to make a fool of myself. Climb up a tree. Children climb up trees. And he climbs up this tree. And if I can imagine in my sanctified imagination, all of the other people around say, look at little Zacchaeus. What's wrong with him? Did he lose his mind? He's climbing up a tree to see Jesus. He's climbing up a tree. And all the people are talking and murmuring. You know how church folk do when they really don't know your story. They want to sit there and talk about you. But something in Zacchaeus made the decision that he would climb this tree climb up this particular tree so that he could see Jesus. And as he is in this sycamore tree looking to see Jesus, Jesus' eyes lock upon him. For a moment, there is no one else but Zacchaeus and Jesus. When you're vulnerable and you connect with God, You stop listening to the whispers of your haters and start listening to the sound of your Savior. Too often we are prevented from moving into the spaces that God desires us to go because we are fearful of what people next to us will say instead of listening to the sound of our Savior. So I bid you good day. I say to you this day, climb 
that tree. Climb that tree. What, whatever challenge you may be facing, Allow God to see the trauma and stop worrying about those next to you. Stop worrying about what they will say because they don't know what you've been through. They don't know how you've stayed up all night. They don't know the tears that you have cried. They don't know the pain that you have experienced. Go ahead and climb the tree. Climb the tree. And let God know I struggle with this depression. I struggle with this trauma. I struggle with my child. I struggle with myself. I struggle with this issue. Lord, I need you right now. I'm climbing the tree. And if you dare become vulnerable, there will come a moment where you will lock eyes with Jesus. There is victory in being vulnerable. Take a lesson from my man Zacchaeus and don't be afraid to climb that tree. Amen. God bless you. Indeed, there is victory in vulnerability. You have to climb that tree. For the next leg of this message, we will focus on Zacchaeus' desire to see Jesus. What caused him to move from greed to grace? Zacchaeus had amassed enough money to bid on the taxes in the region of Jericho. In order to understand what that means, one has to know a little bit about Jericho. At the time of Jesus, Jericho was a wealthy place. According to the historians, during the time of Jesus, Jericho was a significant economic center in the region of Judea. Its strategic location along the trade routes connecting Jerusalem to the Jordan River and beyond contributed to its economic importance. Jericho was known for its fertile land due to the presence of springs and the Jordan River nearby. Agriculture particularly cultivated the land, the cultivation of dates and palms and figs grown in sycamore trees and other crops in addition to the balsam plants which were fragrant and produced perfume and medicine. Jericho was a wealthy place. And Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector in the area. That's like being the chief tax collector in Silicon Valley, California, or Upper East Side, Manhattan, New York, or Highland Park, or even downtown Chicago. In order to be a tax collector, one would have to bid to purchase the contract to collect taxes from a certain region. Zacchaeus apparently had enough money to bid on the taxes of the affluent, the affluent area of Jericho. And not only was he a tax collector, he was a chief tax collector. That would suggest that even before he became a tax collector, he was a manager of people, a hustler extraordinaire. He had some muscle working for him to enforce and protect his assets. He was a gangster of his time. Indeed, a big baller and a shot caller. <laughs> and then he became not only a tax collector, but a chief tax collector. That means he was collecting taxes from other tax collectors. He bought his piece from Rome, and then he pieced it out to other tax collectors. He had his own muscle. And once he became a tax collector, not only did he have his own muscle, but then he was given a contingency of Roman soldiers. He was a chief tax collector, a tax lord, or a tax kingpin of sorts. But as we interrogate this text, as we move further into this text, we must ask the question and answer the question, my brothers and sisters, 
What would make Zacchaeus, a wealthy man, with a contingency of soldiers and personal strong men guarding him, break away just to see Jesus? Zacchaeus, a man who had great wealth because of his great greed, what motivated his desperate yearning just to see Jesus? In my sanctified imagination, it would seem that he saw something before that day. He apparently had never seen Jesus, but he knew about Jesus. Perhaps while he was out on his route harassing people for their money under the guise of collecting taxes, he noticed that they had changed. Perhaps he saw the revenue going down from one group of people like Peter, James, and John, who were fishermen, who are now fishers of men, and he noticed that they were now in that tax-exempt status because their new job didn't pay that much. But on the other hand, maybe he saw people who had been changed, who had been healed by Jesus, who were working like the woman who had the issue of blood, who was now singing and working and moving about and back on the tax rolls. Perhaps it was the man who was paralyzed, whose buddies tore the roof off the sucker just to get their buddy healed by Jesus. Perhaps it was him who was now up and working and moving and back on the tax rolls. Perhaps it was the man with the withered hand who Jesus healed on the Sabbath. Or maybe it was the widow's son who he restored to life when he turned that funeral possession into a shouting session. Perhaps it was the one of the many people who he healed when he had that healing session. Or maybe he was in the local barber shop and he heard the temple ruler Jairus going on about how Jesus healed his daughter and restored her back to life. Or maybe it was the blind men he, who now he restored their sight. Perhaps it was the crippled man or the one who could not speak who is now speaking eloquently. Perhaps he heard about the kind of wine they served at the wedding in Galilee. Or maybe he heard the people saying that he walked on water and calmed a raging sea. Somebody here know what I'm talking about because you know what it was like when you had an encounter with Jesus. When you have an encounter with Jesus, things change, life changes. Perhaps the most compelling testimony came directly from Matthew, the one he knew on the streets as Levi, the one who did the same thing he did for a living, who now his life was changed and now he was a different man. Perhaps that testimony was compelling. Perhaps that is what gave him hope. The scripture says that Zacchaeus was rich. But we know that money alone can't buy happiness. Perhaps he felt the loneliness of his isolation, excommunicated from the church, despised by the community. Maybe he was tired and was looking for hope. You know, his name, Zacchaeus, meant Pure. Maybe he was reminded of his life as a little boy when his parents had so much hope and they called him pure. There was something about that Jesus that compelled Zacchaeus to run ahead of the crowd and climb a sycamore tree just to see Jesus. Zacchaeus, a rich man, though despised a powerful man, Zacchaeus, a man known for his greed and gangster-like ways, we would have to assume that he broke away from his usual contingency of strong men and Roman soldiers. He literally went out on a limb. He rendered himself vulnerable just to see Jesus. And then Jesus saw him. Maybe like many people, Zacchaeus had everything, but he had nothing. When Jesus got to the tree and looked up, he said, Zacchaeus, hurry down. Now, could you imagine you went to a concert of your favorite artist, and, and, and he called your name, huh? But he can't do nothing for you. He can't give you new life. He can't give you new hope. So Jesus called Zacchaeus' name. He says, Zacchaeus, hurry down. Today is my day to be a guest in your home. 
Zacchaeus scrambled out of the tree, hardly believing his good luck, hardly believing his good fortune, delighted to take Jesus home. If Jesus is calling, you better take him home. Jesus looks up at Zacchaeus' elevated position and tells him to come down immediately. And then he elevates Zacchaeus in the presence of all the people. Zacchaeus is physically in an elevated position, but he calls him down and elevates him to a spiritual position. He restores him. Restoration is the word. Jesus saw Zacchaeus. And he called him by name. Jesus calls him into humanity, similar to the way he called the woman with the issue of blood into, into humanity when he called her and called her daughter. Jesus saw Zacchaeus and called him by name. Now, the people around really don't know what's going on. They don't see the transformation and the move of grace. What they know is that Zacchaeus had been nothing nice, a scoundrel, shaking him down all the time. But we have to be careful. We have to be careful because Zacchaeus was with Jesus. Jesus called Zacchaeus, and since we don't have a heaven or hell to put anybody in, we got to be careful when God is moving. They do not understand the generous nature of grace. But God, somebody say, but God. but God. But God knows. And some of us in here know that God is able to take a crooked stick and hit a straight lick. It is amazing what God can do with a life when a life is given to God. And somebody in here knows what I'm talking about. Drunk and sipping in the past, saved and serving right now. Hoeing and hoemongering in the past, whole, healthy, hopeful, and holy right now. Drugged and depressed and drained in the past, but praising and prayerful right now. Mean and miserable in the past, but joyful right now. Zacchaeus, knowing that life had changed for him, he makes an offering before any demand is placed upon him. Out of his contrition, he immediately offers to make right his wrong. Zacchaeus first offers one half of his wealth to the poor. And then he says, if I have cheated, he says, if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times. Now, this is where you know Zacchaeus still has some residue from his life as a tax collector, because he says, if. <laughs> but God knows the heart. It's not what we say, it's what we do. Faith without works is still dead. But there is hope because Zacchaeus is in the process, like many of us. He is in the process. So now Zacchaeus is in the process. Zacchaeus is offering this generous gift. His gift is particularly generous because what he offers is more than what is required. It's more than what is required by the Levitical law. He offers one half of his wealth to the poor, and then he also offers four times what he defrauded people out of. And in the Levitical law, I believe it's Levitical 6.5, the definition of, uh, in, in Levitical 6.5, the requirement, if you caught defrauding somebody, is to give one-fifth above what you took. Zacchaeus offers four times. That's like if he took $100 from you, he really owed you $120. But he's offering you $400. The definition of being generous is showing a readiness to give more of something such as money, time, or time that is strictly necessary or expected. Zacchaeus gives above and beyond what he is required to give. This transformation to radical generosity. This is a transformation to radical generosity, but this transformation to radical generosity is not just about financial wealth. We are reading about this experience to inform our faith and actions right now. Many of us don't have massive wealth, but we do have time. We do have talent. The scripture says, give and it shall be given. And then it really gets good 
as we close out the text where Jesus says, today's salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. Not only was Zacchaeus blessed, but his entire household was blessed. What you do matters to people around you. Jesus consistently shows us his concern for the last, the least, the lonely, and the left out. Benevolence, care for the hurting is a cornerstone of our faith. Zacchaeus exemplifies this transformation. There's a lot going on right now. And God is calling us. We had a wonderful discussion with the men of the church a couple nights ago. We had a Dr. Derek Robinson and Dr. Brian Humphrey and Dr. Joe Sangster. And Dr. Joe blessed us as we closed. Because Dr. Joe said something. He said, there are some solutions to the problem. And he reminded us one of the solutions is to walk in integrity. Right, Brian? He said, walk in integrity. And the other solution is, and he said, we are our brother's keeper. We are our brother's keeper. Zacchaeus' transformation was not just for him. He immediately went back and served the community. Amazing grace. You know, we say, many of us don't know our statement of faith, but we say, in our statement of faith in the United Church of Christ, where my students, they left, but we say, God promises to all who trust him forgiveness of sin and fullness of grace. Courage in the struggle for justice and peace. His presence in trial and rejoicing and eternal life in his realm, which has no end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto him. God's mace, God's grace is amazing. Amazing grace, how sweet it sounds, that saved a wretch like me and Zacchaeus. I once was lost, and now I'm found. Blind, but now I see. God's grace is amazing. God's grace is amazing. And that is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Come on, we praise God for the messengers and the Pastor Moss as well as Reverend Mose Harris. And we thank God for the message. Amen. It's at this time that the doors of the church are open. There may be one today, some man, some woman, some boy or girl that does not have a relationship with Christ. We invite you to come at this time. Is there one today? Is there one? Let's praise God for this young brother that is coming. 
thought it was coming. They didn't come. Is there one? God, we've done what you've asked, and yet there is still room. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let's praise God for this sister. We do have one. Come on, come on. Come on, let's praise God for this brother that's coming. Come on, encourage him. They're coming. Come on, come on. Let's praise God for them. give God thanks for our new members. Why don't we extend our hands and say welcome to Trinity, the greatest church this side of the Jordan. And as Pastor Moss says, we don't die, we what? We want to welcome Kefir and Jasmine to Trinity. We want to invite you to Follow our membership clerks, and then Reverend Minister Sue will also take you to the library. Let's praise God for our two new members. The devil is mad today. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Before we have our prayer concerns, I just want to share with you, I received an announcement during service um, that we would have normally shared during pastor's words and remarks at the beginning of service, but today we have no other than Deacon Mama Lewis who is here, and she is 92 years old today. Come on, let's praise God for Mama Lewis. Deacon Mama Lewis is here, 92 years young. We thank and praise God for her witness, amen, for her life and her legacy. We love us some Mama Lewis. For her commitment and her service to Trinity. If you've never heard Mama Lewis pray, she is a praying sister. We know that God hears her prayers. We say happy birthday to you, Mama Lewis. Happy, happy birthday. Amen. I also want to remind you um, that we have a guest musician today that will be playing after the benediction. We want to make sure that you just remain seated so that you can hear from him today. His name is Alexander Lang. And he'll be playing right after. He is um, over the Gateway Music Festival that's in Chicago this week, featuring Take Six, Decompose, Stream Quartet, Gateways Bra Brass Collective, and Gateways Festival Orchestra, and more. You can purchase tickets for that at Gateways Music Festival. But we are grateful. Where is he? Is he close? He's right over here. Y'all see him over there? He'll be playing shortly as soon as we have our benediction. I also want to remind you before I do our, our bereavement notices that immediately following service for those who are in need of prayer, our healing ministry and our prayer warriors are back on the second and fourth Sunday. And so after service, if you are in need of prayer, if there is something heavy on your heart or something that you're seeking God for, 
there will be prayer warriors in the chapel and our healing ministry will be there lined around the wall in our chapel ready to pray and to go to God in prayer with you and war or with God on your behalf. Amen. The following are our prayer concerns that we ask that you would take down for this week. We ask your prayers for the following family. It was just up there. We ask prayers for the family of Lucille Bobo, mother of our member Gail Bobo. Also for the family of Sherman Cooper, uncle of our members, Reverend Beverly Scott Henderson and Kevin Henderson. For the family of Jacqueline Matthews, mother of our member, Deacon Denise Matthews. Also for the family of Sonia L. McMillan, mother of our member Jordan, Jody McMillan, and mother-in-law of our member Trina Haley McMillan. Also for the family of Elaine Miller, aunt of our member Michelle Dickerson, and also for the family of Lois Peril, mother of our member Rakia Peril. We ask that you would please keep all of those families. Also for the family of Andrew Lee Perry, uncle of our member Deacon Joe Sangster and Lisa Sangster. Family of Donald L. Statton, father-in-law of our member Kimberly Statton, and of Wesley Townsley, uncle of our member Keita Johnson. We ask that you would please keep all of those families in your prayers as you go into your prayer closets this week. Remember, at least to just call somebody by name. Uh, prayer is powerful, church, and God is still in the business of answering prayers and hearing our prayers, amen? And so at this time, I want to invite you to go to God in prayer with me for our altar call prayer. Let us pray. God of our weary years and God of our silent tears, God, we come on this Sunday acknowledging you for who you are. God, you are simply amazing. Matter of fact, the song says, Oh Lord, oh Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. For there is none like you. And for this, we worship you. God, we're so grateful to be in the house of the Lord one more time. In your presence, not laid down before the people to view us, but sitting upright in our right mind, able to worship you one more Sunday. And for this, we say thank you. We also say thank you for waking us up this morning. We say thank you for that breath that we just took. We say thank you, oh God, for the blood that's running warm in our veins. God, we say thank you for keeping us through this week. We say thank you for keeping us through Monday of last week. And we say thank you, oh God, for keeping us through Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, God. We didn't even think we was going to make it through last week. But God, because of your grace and your mercy, you even let us make it through Saturday and allow us to be here on this Sunday. And for this, we say thank you. We don't take it for granted, oh God. God, we bless your name for allowing us to be in your presence one more time. And God, I thank you, oh God, for all those who are up under the sound of my voice today. I thank you for their life. I thank you, oh God, for their witness. And I thank you, oh God, for all that you're doing in their life. And God, it is my prayer that today that you would meet them at their point of need. Some came in here filled with joy, but God, somebody came in here today with their head bowed down and their hearts heavy. And so God, I don't know what it is, but it is my prayer that whatever they are asking you to do, that God, that you would meet them at their point of need. God, bless today your people with healing. Bless, oh God, your people, oh God, today with reconciliation in relationships. God, bless, oh God, somebody today with an answer because God, somebody came in here seeking answers, about to give up. And so God, I ask that you would restore hope, oh God, on today. God, somebody came in here feeling bound. And so God, it's my prayer that you would break every chain, whatever is seeking, oh God, to keep people in bondage today. God, we declare and decree that they will be loosed in the name of Jesus. God, we come declaring today that you will protect our children and that 
God, that you would rid our communities of violence. Say, God, that you would provide somebody with food on today, somebody with shelter today. That, God, that you would lift up hands to the hills from which cometh your help. God, come by here right now and do it right now in the name of Jesus. God, we need you to turn some stuff all the way around. We need you to make some crooked ways straight. God, we need you to shift some stuff, shift our attitudes, shift some perspectives, remove depression right now in the name of Jesus. Cancel out strongholds in people's lives. God, show up right now. And so, God, we thank you right now for what you're doing because we feel you're moving all over this place. We feel you're making ways out of nowhere. We feel your healing already being poured out. We feel your grace being poured out. We feel your love being poured out. We feel it right now. Somebody's got the victory right now. So, God, we're not going to wait till the battle is over. We shout right now. We say hallelujah. We praise you right now in advance for what you're doing. We praise you for victories. We praise you for the answers. We praise you for the healing. We praise you for new life. We praise you for answering our prayer right now. It's in the master's and the mighty name of Jesus that we pray and we give thanks. And we say hallelujah from the bottom of our belly. And we say amen, amen, and amen. If you know that God has already answered your prayer, you ought to put your hands together in this house and give our God some praise. Oh, hallelujah. He's making a way right now. He's already worked it out. God. We thank and praise God for what God is doing right now. Praise him. You can keep on praising him. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. We thank and praise God for what God is doing. you and keep you. Make God's faith shine upon you and be gracious unto each one of you until we meet again. Go in peace. Have a fantastic week and know that God loves you real, real good. May we say amen together and may we say ashe and may we give God praise together, communal praise for all that God will do. Go in peace. Have a wonderful week, Trinity.